to eliminate one RGB LED, you must call uh, the subroutine set LED. It needs six parameters. It's very simple. Three parameters for the coordinates and three parameters for the basic colors. The microcontroller contains about 30 registers and I have dedicated six registers for this uh, subroutine. And the registers uh, will be addressed by its hardware address, but uh, an uh, assembler instruction allows uh, to use uh, names for these registers. So there are exist the registers X, Y and Z and the registers red, green and blue. After the execution of the subroutine, the values remain in the registers. With the LDI instruction, I can load a certain or a load value into the register. LDI, load, immediate, R, X, with zero. You can call a subroutine what you want. Most of programmers uh, use the name uh, set voxel, but you can use other names, subroutine one or cube or lady of midnight. Uh, the operating system contains also any other uh, uh, subroutines. The first is clear all lines. This subroutine clears the complete display memory. Another subroutine is uh, a time delay. I use uh, the German word Zeit for this. Let's start the program and you will see the origin of the coordinates is shining white. For a better understanding I will give you a summary about the important steps of the system. Um, at first is the assembling. It generates a hex file. This contains the meshing code. Uh, then I start and the meshing code will be loaded in the microcontroller and then it start and the address zero. It uh, contains the operating system, contains a lot of assembler instructions, definitions, any uh, subroutines and the kernel. The kernel contains subroutines for the refresh of the cube. The stop instruction is necessary. The application has finished and you can't stop the CPU. Therefore you need a loop, a jump on the same uh, command address. Let's play a little bit with the parameters. The Z and X coordinate uh, should be 2, assemble and load. We see the result. Let's change the color to red. Assemble, load. OK. Or change to purple. Assemble button, load button. OK. Next task is uh, to write an LED line. Uh, we should address the next LED. Load immediate register X with 1 and additional uh, recall the set LED instruction. We address the next 
LEDs. Sample load, see the result, and so on. We have five LED subroutines and the five illuminated LEDs. But this is a very bad way. Uh, we don't must use the absolutely value. Uh, for register. Uh, there is an instruction uh, which increase the value of a register. Increment register x and we see the same result. Also this way is very bad. We have too much text for only 10 lamps. So we must use a loop we write the let and ink instruction one time and set a label on the right point. With the CPI instruction uh, we check the counts of the loop and dependent on the result of this compare uh, we use the branch instruction to jump back or not. CPI means compare immediate the value of a register with a certain value. This uh, action set the zero flag. Next instruction means branch not equal and dependent on the result of the flag uh, we finished the loop. Therefore, we approached us the right value for the compare. We use 9 and then we use the value 10. We must consider the value 9 is for the 10th LED and the value 10 is for is for the 11th. All 10 LEDs illuminate at once, but we can't see if the loop works properly. Therefore, we drag us the delay instruction into the loop. Assemble, load and see the result. The number 3 belongs only to the name of this uh, time instruction. Uh, it's another instruction, uh, it's another subroutine uh, with other values. The assembly code to write one LED line is ready. It we need only five text lines. Next task is to produce more lines in the Y dimension to have a plane. Therefore we increase the Y register and test if we have wrote enough lines Set the label of the right on the right point. And write a branch instruction which decide jump or not. It works. Now we want to have 10 lines in this plane. It needs a long time to look. And we drag the time 
delay in the new loop. So we have an inner loop and an outside loop. After increasing the register Y, we have the complete X loop. To make more planes, uh, we, we have the same procedure. We increase the Z register, compare with the right value, set the right label, and write the branch instruction. That's all. Assemble and load. It works. And we can to check the outside loop whether uh, drag the time instruction in the outside loop. Okay, we can remove the time instruction and also after pressing the reset button, the cube appears at once. We can improve the look of the program. We can use any uh, label names for instance lady of midnight or we can use speaking names uh, we can give the names of the registers after the change you must test it assemble and load and it works again We can also indent the text to differ better the inner, the middle and the outside loop. Next task is uh, clean the desktop. We transfer our main program to a subroutine. We must have a name for the subroutine. We can use the name cube or lady of midnight okay we take lady of midnight after finishing the subroutine uh, we must go return to the main program very important is the subroutines must be behind the stop instruction in the main area we call Lady of Midnight. Assemble. Load. And it works. We can give another color. We use red, assemble, load, and blue. It can be a lot of work to change the colors for the cube. Therefore, I use also the macro feature. The macro contains any CPU instructions. I can call a macro when I need it, but it's no subroutine. Uh, it's only an assembler yeah, instructions. The CPU instructions uh, will be inserted while assembling. A macro begins like any other assembler instruction with dot followed by the word macro and the name of the macro. It's finished with the end instruction.
After the definition of a macro, I can call it simply by writing its name. The next color should be orange. So I write the name of the defined macro. And so I need only two instructions to make a colored cube. Next part is the usage of a common parameter. We will use a register for this. We can also uh, define the type of an assembler instruction and a variable for this value of the register. In all loops, we compare the length with the value 10. To change the size of a cube, it's better to compare with the variable so that we can make this change only in one text line. The name of the instruction is CP. Compare register 1 with register 2. So we will test it with a value 10. And now we change the value to 5. Assemble and load and it works. In the last part, we will apply our knowledge. We program the show we saw after the intro. It's very simple. We will write enough codes for the cube and choose the colors. We want uh, the light show runs in a loop, so we set a jump instruction and a label on the right point. For a better look, we reactivate the time delay in the outside loop. Assemble button, load and start. We don't use the clear option like in the beginning. The new cube overrides the old cube. With only few CPU commands you can create interesting animations.